Uh, I'd love to understand the business model a little bit more. So how mm. would it work? Me as a CEO, for example, if mm. I, I'm like, hey, you know what? I could use uh, someone with your skill set to help, mm. uh, you know, fine tune my staff members a little bit. How would it work? Yeah. So a couple of different ways, really. I mean, one of the beauties about being super duper fresh into industry um, and to this space is I've got heaps of time, right? Yeah. Where, you know, other people, they've got their full books and you're maybe trying to squeeze in an afternoon with them at some point in November. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, let's do it tomorrow, you know. So nice. there's that perspective. So I've got the immediacy, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And the way that I've been working with businesses is either going in there and doing um, sessions similar to what we're doing now, like a bit of a you know lunch and learn type thing where I'm talking to their employees about anxiety and the ways that they can get out of their own heads and actually start performing better mm -hmm. and catch themselves, support their team, et cetera. And um, I work one-on-one -on -one with people and that's my most favorite because I really love seeing people going from feeling really shit to really awesome mm -hmm. in a really short period of time. Because again, it's all about ROI, right? Just mm -hmm. getting shit done. And mm -hmm. um, so that's my most favorite way to work. Um, and I guess also the other thing that I've got and that I'm working on is doing things such as this and, you know, doing a speaking tour type things and talking about all things anxiety in the broking industry for Are You OK Day in September. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And how do you acquire your customers right now? Is it ma mainly word of mouth? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing a bit of a um, oh, like a, a LinkedIn outreach campaign. Mm -hmm. um, which was essentially an idea that I got from Julian, um, oh, yeah. who, you know, heads up loan options. Um, it was what he did in his very, very early days. Just, what did he do? Just reached out to his market through yeah. LinkedIn and sent them all these notes being like, hey, this is what I'm doing now. These are the benefits. Yeah. Let me know if you think this would be of interest. Let's grab a coffee. Um, so I've gone, you know what? He's a good guy. Mm. And um, it worked for him. So <laughs> I'm like, Jules what do you think about that concept? And he's like, absolutely go for it. And, and that's been working really, really well. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially doing a combination of that, uh, the content that I put, put on LinkedIn and Instagram and um, also just the token like digital spend. As mm -hmm. you know, when you start your business, you've got two parts of bugger all when mm -hmm. it comes to marketing budget. So, mm, of course. and I did do that thing where I held my nose and jumped in the deep end and got a commercial lease in a clinic space in the middle of the city. Oh, wow. In Sydney. Yeah. I saw I the space in the video. It looks very nice. The space yeah. is beautiful. I do love it, but it's also a little bit expensive. So, um, <laughs> but again, the good thing about that, right? Creating, um, you know, yeah, that, that uncomfortable mm -hmm. feeling. Sometimes you've got to have a little bit of fiscal friction to be mm -hmm. able to get you out and hustling and working hard. Definitely. What do you say to people that have a bit of resistance to reaching out um, for help? Because I think that's probably one of the biggest mm. challenges, especially for men. They have the pride, they have their ego. They don't want yeah. to say, you know, I can figure it out. I'll just, you know, yeah, you know, toughen up. Um, what, what is the, how do, what, what do you sort of, you know, say to people like that? Personally, I haven't had any, uh, you know, therapy sessions or anything mm. like that. But if I, you know, if I was someone that's resisting that, what advice would you give me to, you know, change my mind or change someone else's mind that might be in need but is not doing it? <gasps> Look, it, it depends, right? Because everyone's got a different reason for, you know, why they're resisting. Mm -hmm. Some people are resisting because they're like, you know, struggling to find the money to be able to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Or they think that, you know, they're not worth fixing, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole different conversation. Other people are nervous about the amount of time it's going to take. Um, or some people are, again, nervous about what I was talking about earlier, that whole concept of I don't want to have to dig up all the old shit and feel mm -hmm. really upset and uncomfortable. And um, so I guess the way that I've tried to position how I'm working is to mitigate those three. So like, yes, we are solution focused. We're not going through and digging through all the old stuff. Um, yes, we do get uh, action really quickly. Mm -hmm. Literally after one session, someone starts feeling better, ideally four. And you can go from feeling like mm. from rubbish to pretty awesome pretty quickly. Again, using the power of the subconscious. Yeah, love um, <laughs> And again, also thinking about the, the money piece, mm. like some people have some compensatory behaviors, right? So you feel shit. So you go out and you'll spend the night at the pub and spend how much money or you go and do some poker games and spend a hunk of money or whatever your other behavior is. And again, we know in this space, there are some pretty established compensatory behaviors for when people are like you know, out on the beers. Mm. So it's thinking about, okay, well, if I'm going to be dropping that much money, on mm. something that'll make me feel good for a little bit. Mm. Imagine if I actually did it in a way that was going to genuinely improve be myself. Sustainable. And yeah. Yeah. That tends to be sort of the 
the the problem with a lot of people is that the very short term focus it's like okay i want to get a quick instant gratification here mm. go out for the night hopefully i feel better for a couple of hours yeah. forget about my worries yeah whereas as opposed to investing in yourself whether it's through you know sessions meditation yeah. you know going to the gym these things that have sustainable long term um payback but that's that's yeah. good that's good insight like in terms of these are the different kind of objections that Look, clients would have before the, there, coming there in. was a client that I worked with. Um, I mean, he saw me speak when I went to Tassie in April. Mm -hmm. So I'd literally only just got the keys to my space and yeah, flew on down to, to Tassie because the guys at Derwent Finance were doing a, um, a day about mental health. Uh, cause it'd been, uh, Rihanna from down there had discovered that there were brokers that last year actually killed themselves mm -hmm. because, you know, they're under so much pressure in their financial business. And she'd been to events and people would kind of gloss over it like it wasn't even a thing. And she's like, what is going on? Like, this is so important. And so she's created a forum um, where people could actually come and talk about how they're genuinely feeling and the pressure mm -hmm. that they're under. And we know that anxiety is a precursor to depression, right? Mm -hmm. So the anxiety starts and then if you don't do something about it, you feel hopeless and then you feel helpless and then you're like, well, what's the fucking point? Mm -hmm. And that's when people kill themselves, yeah. Yeah. which is why I want to work in this space because the amount of pressure particularly in the broken world that everyone's under with all of the macroeconomic stuff that's going on. I won't talk about it. It's so boring, but they're literally being like in a vice right now. Mm. And I'm really, really nervous, right? Because typically these businesses are being run by men. <laughs> and a lot of these guys don't have like the latitude to have people to have real conversations with and to be able to genuinely be open and honest with and talk about what's happening for them mm. without someone going, Oh, yep. She'll be right, mate. Just yeah. don't think about it. Just you know, go for a like, B, we'll be fine. <laughs> like, yeah. no, that's that's not helpful. So the dude that I talk, I worked with, um, I think he he signed up for only like three weeks to work with me. And when he first um, started chatting, he was in Tassie, so we were mm. doing a Zoom session um, with him. Uh, he was like strung out and struggling to focus, struggling to managing his, his team, just feeling like really, really depleted. And, um, yeah, we had a session with him. The next time I saw him, I'm like, what's changed? What's happened? And he's like, I'm feeling better. I'm more focused. I'm actually going to work wanting to engage with people as opposed to he was running active avoidance prior. And, and by the third week, he's like, you know what? This is great. Everything's really good. Mm -hmm. And he was feeling like he had more um, strategic intention, that he was giving better clarity to his team and that everything was just running better. And not only was he feeling better, but mm -hmm. he was actually doing better. Mm. He was actually being mm. better in his role. And that's what's important. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.